Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus Christ. There is none other in heaven or on earth. Welcome to another episode of Hope in Christ with Denise. Here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast, where we place our hope in the only hope there is, Christ our Lord. Welcome, 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 welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. I am your host, Pastor Denise, and I welcome you back to today's teaching, today's devotional about who is God. Before we begin with today's devotional, we're going to begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we magnify you yet again for your word, your truth, and you desiring truth in the inward part. So, Father, we pray now that you're moving up our hearts, open our ears, open our eyes, and we may see you, the great and true and living God. Father, we magnify you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you all for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Denise, and here at Hope in Christ, we continue to be healthy, Overcomers purpose with an eternal perspective in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And he is where we find our true identity. So today we're going to be talking briefly about who is God. So please, please, please join um, the Hope in Christ Facebook journaling group um, where we are doing Bible journaling, just building biblical literacy through Bible journaling together. And so um, I just wanted to shout that out to you. Um, we are on Facebook again, the Is This English Class or Bible Study Bible Journaling Group, because it is strategies from English class that we actually use, and we journal through the Word. And so I wanted to um, shout that out to you so that you all could join us there. Join us there. So let's dive right in. So, again, we're going to be talking about who is God. Now, I know you're listening and you're saying, okay, that's the basic. We know who God is. But the question is, do we really know who God is? Is the word God a cliche that the world uses every day? Because the truth of the matter is God could be a tree. God could be one of the religions that people have created. God could be anything that we make it, right, and we make him out to be. But the true and living God is who we're talking about. And so I wanted to, I've been thinking about that for journaling, and that just popped in my spirit to begin the study again, because we've studied before, right? We've, we've read scriptures about who God is over and over. But in this season, it is time to get back to who God is. Because when we know who God is, we know what he expects, right? We know how he operates. We know, so let's do the, real quick, a strategy. So listen, pay attention, um, and grab this strategy real quick. So when we know God, when we really truly read the scriptures about God in the Bible, right, we will know the five W's and the H, right? We'll know what what attributes, what characteristics God has, right? We will know who, first of all, we know who he is, and then we will know what attributes or characteristics he, he, he carries. Amen? And so and then we will know when. We, there's no when with God, right? We, we, we don't have a when because God did not just come into being, right? So we come to an understanding of that um, where we know that God is everywhere when we study the word. When we study the word, we know that God is everywhere at all times. He's eternal, right? Um, we have the who, what, when, where, and then why. Why is it so important? Why are we here? Why did God make us, right? So we come to an understanding of that and then how. How does it all come together? How does it work? How does Knowing about God helped me 
to walk in his truth and walk in a relationship with him. Amen. And so that that just popped in my head, and I wanted to, to throw that out there. But that's why we need to know who God is. And we're talking about Elohim, Elohim from Genesis 1. And so we're going to start there. Um in the complete Jewish Bible. And so there's several Bibles that I use um, that are very close, meaning word-for-word translation. One is the complete Jewish Bible, which is Messianic, right? And it helps us understand the actual wording of um, the people of the time and the different things um, that we need to really, really relate and connect with. And then we have the, um, that I'll be reading from this New American Standard Bible. And there are times, a lot of times, I also read from the New King James Version and the King James Version. So we're going to dig into Genesis 1 and 1. So Genesis 1 and 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, I studied this one this morning. And I looked at it, and, and again, you're thinking, and you're thinking like I was, like, okay, Lord, this scripture is, I've read it a million times, right? We've read it so many times, but we don't stop to really think about it. We don't stop to think about it. So let's go back to the five W's. So as I was studying this this morning, I said, hold up, wait a minute. In the beginning, God created. So the first thing before we do the five W's, the first thing that popped in my head after reading that over and over and studying the word God, which is Elohim, ruler, judge, deity, right? Um, so, again, it's used in in a sense of the, the, the small g could be any God or, or judge that you've created or um, that is a human being or uh, of the sense or the such, right? But um, as I was looking at in the beginning God, I began to say, hold up, there was no need for introduction. There was no need for introduction because Genesis 1 and 1 starts with in the beginning God. It does not attempt to tell you who God is in in the introduction sense or where God supposedly came from of what people say today and things like that. So it just lets you know. There's no need for introduction. This is who I am. I know who I am. Now I need you to know who I am. And so that just stood out to me. And so going back to our five W's, when I read in the beginning God created, right, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and it goes on from there, I I came to see who, right, who God was, the creator, simple enough, right, um, who is God, the creator? What did he do? He created the heavens and the earth. So then that takes me back to today's time in, in 2019 where we find ourselves living, where people try to get you to believe that the earth just came to be or that we just came out of nowhere and we just appeared. And the word says that Elohim created us, Right? And not just any, you know, some people would say Greek mythology and, 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 and you know, trying to make God mythical and, and from the Greek mythology and, and the false gods and false teachings from that. Um, but the Bible just simply tells us Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Because the rest of it we're supposed to grab by faith. Amen? So, again, who is God? We find that he's the creator here. And what is he doing? He created the heavens and the earth. He didn't introduce himself and say, hey, I'm God, I came from. No, because he's always existed. existed. So what, what that told us from that scripture alone was just what I just said. He has always or has always existed. So there is no need to try to figure him out and figure out, okay, is there a beginning to God or end to God because he is eternal. This scripture tells us and shows us that God is eternal. Before you read anything else, we see that God is eternal in Genesis 1 and 1, that there's no beginning 
of God. Because if there was a beginning of God, there would not, he wouldn't be God, right? He wouldn't be God. So I thought that was profound in itself, just sitting and reading that scripture once again and recognizing that he is not a human. He's not just um, something that we throw on. He is eternal. He has always existed, and he exists within himself. And so I just found that amazing. So we're going to move on from there. So we did again the who, the what, when. When did God create? It doesn't say. It just says in the beginning. We don't know when the beginning was. not for real. We can say archaeological evidence says this, but only God knows truly when the beginning was, right? And we take it by faith. And so that's the so that's the when. Um, who, what, when, where? Where is God? He's beyond the earth. Why? Because he created the earth. So the earth is not big enough to hold him. Oh, my God, that is so amazing. The earth is not big enough to hold him. And so we see that just in that one little verse. Where? Why? Why did God create? There's scriptures as you read, we read further in the Bible and we read down further and he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. He created us with purpose. Purpose was behind him creating us. God didn't need us. Remember, he exists within himself. So he does not need us. And this is one of the things that I remember when I first came to Christ and I began to ask God a lot of questions. And I said, God, why did you create us, humanity, human beings? Because we are so rebellious, God. Why did why did you create us? Why did you go through the trouble of creating us and understanding and I and I continue to think about it and understanding you didn't have to. You don't need us. You chose to create it, create, a, create us for your purpose. And so um that that again was amazing. So we're gonna go on to the next scripture. And the next scripture we have is Exodus three and fourteen. And this is when Moses was standing before Pharaoh. And Moses said um, before he God sent him to Pharaoh, he was um, sending him to Pharaoh. He was giving him instructions. And Moses asked God, who should I tell Pharaoh sent me? Because in the sense, if you look at it and you look deeper in the scripture, and on my other podcast, we're studying the book of Exodus. But if you look deeper at the scripture, we can infer that in, in essence, Moses was saying this Pharaoh thinks he's already God. So he has this God kind of conflict. So I got to tell him who sent me, you know, who who exactly am I having a conversation with? And so um, God responds to Moses. He responds to Moses. And he says, I am who I am. I read this so many years ago, and I said, what does that mean? I am who I am. And he says, he goes on to say, and thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So he said, not only are you going to tell Pharaoh, you're going to talk to Pharaoh, but you're going to also tell the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So I went on a quest just looking for, you know, I am. And the Strong's Concordance, it it refers to the word be. And as I dug deeper and dug deeper, looked at the meaning, and and I said, God, I I remember uh, reading this so many, many times before, and I remember you saying, I am, that part standing out to me. And so as I read and I studied, I found something that explains it in the Hebrew. And so it says here, and I'm going to read it, and it is from um, the HebrewForChristians.com website, and it says simply, I am that I am 
derives from the quail in perfect first person form of the verb haya, I will be, and therefore indicates a connection between the name Yahweh or Yehovah and being itself um, Yahweh or Yehovah is the source of all being and has been inherent himself has being, I'm sorry, and has being inherent in himself. He is necessary being. Everything else is contingent being that derives existence from him. The name Jehovah or Yahweh also uh, speaks the utter transcendent of God. In himself, God is beyond all predictions or attributes of language. He is the source and foundation of all possibility of utterance and thus and beyond all defin- definite descriptions. So, again, let me read that because I fumbled a little bit with that paragraph. It derives from the uh, quail in perfect first-person form of the verb haya. And again, therefore, indicates a connection between the name Yahweh or Yehovah and Himself being, being Himself. Um, he is the source of all being, and has being inerrant in Himself. So He is being. He is the necessary being. Everything else is contingent being that derives existence from him. So everything else exists because of him, because he is being. And so when when we read that, it's like, whoa, have we ever really stopped and, and just read over that? And, and again, this being a podcast, I, I thank you all for tuning in. And yes, I fumble and I stumble sometimes, but I just believe that, you know, we do um, reality. This is reality, and we have to study the word, and we have to understand who exactly is God. And so I am that I am. He's saying to Moses, tell him I exist. I am being within myself, that without me, he wouldn't exist. And so it's amazing for me when I'm reading the scriptures like this, and I really dig into it, And I go for a search, I go on a quest, because I want to know the God of the Bible. I want to know more and more who he is in John 1, as he is in Genesis 1, as he is in the book of Isaiah. I want to know who he is. And we know, since I mentioned John 1 and 1, we all are familiar with John 1 and 1 in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, right? And so we know the Word is Jesus. And that context of of John 1 and 1 tells us that Jesus and God are one. He's part of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so um, I just wanted to throw that one out there. So we're mentioning God. We're talking about God, the triunity of who he is. Amen. And so I just wanted to read that. I am that I am. I have being within myself. I have being within myself. Amen. Let's read another one. Another scripture we have is, is Isaiah 40, 28 and 29. Isaiah 40, 28 and 29 reads, Do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. So I want to park in verse 28. Do you not know or have you not heard the everlasting God? So before we even read Isaiah 40 to give us more clarity of who God is, 
we already knew from Genesis 1 and 1 that he's everlasting. He's eternal, right? He has always existed. He will always exist. So it says the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, takes us right back to Genesis 1 and 1. Amen. So we're just walking through the scriptures of who is this mighty, mighty, mighty God that we serve. We, uh, again, and I keep saying it and I keep going back to it, but in the time we find ourselves living and existing, it's very scary. Because, again, those that are tuning in later on right now, again, God could be anything in, the, in today's world. And so the word that we're studying is making sure we understand the I am. I am that I am. I am being. There is being that exists within me. I exist within myself, and you can't exist unless I am. And he is, and because of him we exist. Amen? I'm going to try to say that 15 times, huh? And so then we have, so that was Isaiah 40, 28 through 29. Do you not know, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary? Because he's all powerful. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He is God. He's eternal. He is everlasting. So how can he become weary if he's everlasting? Amen? A few more scriptures here. So then we have 1 Timothy 1 and 17, and we're going to read that again from the complete Jewish version of the Bible. And it says, so the king eternal, imperishable, and invisible, the only God there is, let there be honor and glory forever and ever. So at the end of the book of Timothy, the salutation, the end of it, they say, so the king eternal. So they want us to understand who are they referencing. They're not referencing an earthly king. They're not referencing um, just any old body, but they're saying eternal, imperishable, hmm. not able to perish, and invisible, hmm. who manifested himself in flesh. So the invisible God, so here we learn more about who God is. He's invisible, right, because he's spirit. We have another scripture that says that God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? And then we have that he's eternal and imperishable. That means he, nobody can destroy him. Nobody. Nobody can destroy him. He will destroy but no one can destroy him. And in all the power that God has within himself, he is merciful. He does not destroy you in your mess. He does not destroy me in my mess and my sin and my ways. And, and um, I was just thinking today as I was reading about this and, and, and thinking about the scriptures that I wanted to do on a podcast, I thought about the amount of times that humanity shakes our fists at God. And just like a, the, the commercial or like um, we see little kids, little toddlers say, you're not the boss of me. If we really stop and think about the scriptures we just studied, the great I am. I am that I am. I am being all by myself. I am eternal. I am imperishable. I am spirit. I am the everlasting God. But yet humanity has a free will, and we are free to shake our fist at God and say, you are not the boss of me. I say that to say that if you are listening to me, and including myself, if I ever did that, and you're listening and you are 
shaking your fist at God, saying, you're not the boss of me, or doubting his existence. I pray in this moment, and I pray as you're listening to me, that you would call out to him. Call out to him. Allow him to be God in your life. Surrender your heart to him so that you may be made free and that you don't die outside of him. Because if all life exists within him, and it does, and we perish outside of him, then we no longer have true life. And so I wanted to think of, I wanted everybody to think about that as you're listening to this podcast. I know a lot of times we read a lot of scriptures, but these particular scriptures, I want you to really, really dig into it. I want you to really understand that God is God and there is no other. God is the only eternal. God is the only imperishable one. God is the only invisible spirit. Spirit meaning all-powerful God. He is the only everlasting God. He is the Lord. He is the creator. He alone is the, is the great I am. And so I say to you again today, don't don't doubt him. Don't push away from him. Don't shake your fist in his face and say you're not the boss of me because you'll find out when you'll find out sooner or later who's the boss of you. And it will be him. And it is him. And so we want to accept him now for ourselves. Love him just because, not because somebody forced us to, not because we heard our grandparents and our great-grandparents or our mom and our dad talk about Jesus, but because we love him. Get to know him. Read the word. Dig into the word and come to the understanding of who Jesus, of who God truly is. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We glorify you, God, for there is no other God. And we thank you for being the great I am because without you, we are nothing. So, Father, I pray for those brothers and sisters I have listening to this podcast. I pray that you would touch their hearts, open their eyes, open their understanding, God, that they may know you and the power of your resurrection. They may know you. And they may not walk in falsehood. They may know the truth, and the truth may make them whole and make them free. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast, a award winning gospel radio show where we take the message of the cross around the world and we glorify Jesus Christ in it. Thank you all. Have a phenomenal week. Amen.